Um, very simple, basically. It's as far as we get in the grinders. I don't have any coffee actually in the hopper here, but mm -hmm. you normally close it to save some of your coffee. Um, if you are using a little lock screw, which is right up here, to hold your hopper in place, you will have to just unscrew that. Unscrew that if I can get my screwdriver into it, and that'll actually pop that off. And then also, I probably would want to dump my coffee out and clean that too, right? You, you would. Yeah, actually, this to me is the most disgusting part of coffee shops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If you can see this Don't color. Don't mince any words there, Brandon. <laughs> if you can see this color, this is how they start. Um, I have walked into many coffee shops where it's a nice beige. Yes. Um, that is not the direct color. This is yeah, how it's, it's supposed clear. to look. Um, you can't see through it. The oils of all that espresso, all the coffee inside of it is what will eventually turn this into a nice dark black brown. or brown, brown or whatever. Okay. So yes, please clean this. You can even just take a bag, put it over top of the bag, open it up. Got it. Rinse it. Cool. It's nice. Um, all right, so now we're in here. This is our big problem. I'm gonna spill beans everywhere. We got mm -hmm. beans sitting there. Um, shop vacs are great. Okay. That's generally the easiest way to do it, or you can just dump it over and make a mess, which is my preferred method. But Let's, but we brought a shop back for you today. We brought a shop back, <laughs> and I this is my first time actually in Gail's kitchen. Oh my gosh. So I didn't want to make a mess. <laughs> so we're gonna be nice. Okay. Wasted beans. I hate that. Um, and now we have to get this collar off of here. Mm -hmm. A couple things in this collar, a lot of people forget about this little set screw. One okay. of the things is if you put that little set screw in there, it just kind of holds in place. All right. So eventually it's going to turn around. And I'll show you and once hit. we get it out, but do you see how there's a little lever right there, a little spot? It can't yes. keep going. Okay. So people kind of get confused. Why won't it come that off? That sort of sets your range. Yep. That okay. sets your range. It's changeable, obviously, just by taking this off mm -hmm. or mostly out. And then you can just set it, but it, it keeps you in a certain collar. Okay. Um, a certain um, uh, area of the threads? Yes, okay. a certain area of the threads. So what you, what you, we'll see here in a second when I get this off. What you got to remember with this, it's just a big, gigantic screw. Okay. That's all it is. Um, you can see the threads right on here. Mm -hmm. What happens is I can effectively endlessly spin this all the way through. Okay. So that little screw is just kind of holding it, so that way I kind of keep within some range. Got it. Um, you can take it out, you don't have to use it, but it's nice to not, not have go to. from there. Okay. Uh, once we really get to that point, you can see it just screwed off really easily. Um, mm -hmm. It's opposite of what you would expect, so normally it's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. This is righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. <laughs> lefty-tighty, okay. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's what you have to remember from there. And then okay. we get inside. All right. And you can see really how simple this whole thing is and how simple it is to clean it, okay? Okay. Um, so one, this, this guy is not, it has not been heavily used, so we don't have a lot of residue in there. No, this guy's not been heavily used. Um, you know, ideally, if, if you are cleaning it, though, it does generally somewhat look like this. Yeah. The only real difference right now is because I don't have a lot of used grinds inside of there. Mm -hmm. But once you vacuum that out the way I just did right there, you kind of wish that it's going to be looking like this. Okay. Um, and you can keep it like this. You know, this one here has probably a couple hundred pounds of espresso through it. And so I've seen, um, I see that there's some grinds here in the thread. So we want to first maybe take a brush to, to that area to yep. kind of loosen that up. Yeah. You normally want to just get, just kind of get a little bit inside of there. I'm actually going to take these out as well just just to kind of get through there i'm going to show you that whole process oh you're going to take the burrs out i'm going to take the burrs out okay. for you um but yeah you can really just even get inside of here I'll try to get that out of there um running grinds through it regularly is is going to prevent that stuff from sticking okay you can kind of see i'll get a little flathead screwdriver here you can kind of see even after i just did that you can still see it's kind of stuck inside uh, most of that is just the oil. Um, it's very little at this point. Mm -hmm. Most of that's the oil, though. You can kind of see it right there. Um, that's what's going to make that stick. Okay. So we're actually going to go ahead and just take these burrs out of here, though. Actually, I'm going to use a flathead. It's really just three screws. The only real thing to be careful with when you're doing this, this is the part that confuses people. It spins. Yeah. <laughs> um, so really... Oh, nice. It's just a little stopper, effectively. Uh, once you figure out which way it's going... Let's get through here, bind that up there, and then we can actually get a screwdriver in there and pop that out. Um, now, now this is how if um, after a while 
you know, in a commercial environment about what every year I might have to replace my burrs? Every depending? year you generally have to replace your burrs. Okay. Truthfully speaking, um, as long as you know how to turn a screw and you don't strip it out, yeah. there's really no harm in actually taking these out because you'll see there's actually some some grinds underneath it oh. as well. Oh, so up. you recommend for like these heavy duty, like high production models to that you should be removing these burrs during cleaning. I, I like to. Okay. Um, I, you know, again, I, I think you don't, you want to be careful not to get overly excessive. Mm -hmm. um, general rule of thumb is, you know, there's no such thing as too much cleaning. Yeah. But when we're dealing with screws, if we start taking these in and out yeah. every two weeks, you're going to eventually strip something. Okay. Um, but yes, I like to actually do that because now we can get there and now we can actually get underneath here anything that ends up. And again, you can see they're kind of clean. I, yeah. I, I keep them relatively clean here. Okay. Um, but you can actually get any of this gunk that's underneath. So it. there may be some like coffee oils build up over there. Yep. You're going to um, have oils. You're going to have just regular, regular grinds that's underneath there. Um, it, it may sound minor, but just a little bit underneath it as well can start affecting you how that, that consistency okay yeah. and then um how would i know when i need to replace them other than just time Re replacement is a interesting thing um okay. this is impossible to show over video but it's okay. it's, it's a sharpness okay? okay so as i'm running this run it, most people are familiar with knives yeah know, with your regular knives you get a nice sharpened knife you just barely touch it and mm -hmm. you can just feel it sharp whereas when it's dull over time you can kind of even put your whole finger on it yeah it's the same concept through here okay okay what I like to do though is you can really start seeing, and these are these are pretty fresh burrs. You can feel it right here, but feel the very edge, okay? Just the very very edge, and go this way with it. Like that. See how there's still sharpness to even yeah. the very edge of it. That means okay. that they're pretty pretty good. That's going to start dulling over time, and we're going to start getting into here. There's so much. If you can see how much space we have there, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard for those to not be sharp. Um, but you will see that after 1,100 pounds. Even it's, down at the bottom is just dull. And um, then also, if you see some shiny bits, there's nicks, right? Like possibly you got a pebble in one of your bags of coffee or something yeah. like that, right? Some yeah, kind of you, nicks. You will you'd... see nicks, but I mean, you know, again, we kind of, I don't know. That that one's always so hard to me. I mean, yeah. you may, it's rare you would see a big chunk of something missing. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that'll tell you all different ways of finding it. I mm -hmm. I just run my fingers around it. I mean, you can, I, I start from here. As you go in, we're dull, dull, dull. Okay, okay. now I'm starting to get some bite, basically. Got it. Once I get to the point that I'm in the meaty part, and it feels like I'm running my finger over a butter knife, Yeah, that's when they're gone. Okay, so um, basically you take that guy out, brush it off real well, clean yep. it. Take it, um, get it out from there. And then and then you'd get, get down in there obviously as well with a brush and vacuum and, and uh, clean that too. Exactly. What else do I need to do? Um, inside of here, if we were running this, if, if if I just ran a bunch of espresso through there, you would actually see this little chute. It had coffee in it. Yep, that would be out. Okay. A, a little um, air duster. <laughs> That yeah. can go through unless you have an air compressor, which is also nice. Mm -hmm. That'll blow that out. Same concept. We can get the, the shop vac and get inside of there. Okay. Um, you can see these little front screws that are up here. This mm -hmm. actually holds a little guide, a uh, little finger protector. Mm -hmm. Actually, people always call it a finger protector. What it really does is it makes sure that your coffee doesn't spray oh. out to there. I was always like, why are they protecting my finger from there? Well, we, you know, <laughs> like, cat, it's not really much that goes can go dangerous, but that makes sense. Your hands are so precious, we do not meow, meow, meow. want to do that. <laughs> One of these days, you put your hand out, missing a finger, and then there's going to be a super jolly thrown in the trash very exactly. angrily. <laughs> Um, so we're going to take this off of here. But yeah. that makes more sense that that's sort of more of a guide, yep. so it's not spraying everywhere. Yeah. Eventually, when this is fully chock full, it'll just kind of bubble out. Yeah. But if, if I were to, in, you know, if I were to actually put these birds back in or start it up and leave mm -hmm. this off, you'll see this shoot. sprays this way. I see. And then a lot of problems, and I, I'd have to loosen this real quick to get into that, but if this thing is shifted, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you'd have coffee just running down even if you weren't dosing it out. Okay. So we put this in there, it deflects it down. So now that I have that off, um, what's my best way to clean down in there in my little doser chamber? Depends how you want to do it. I okay. like to grab this here. What is it? So number eight, metric ratchet. Okay. We're gonna actually gonna take this off. If I can that whole this little screw. Oh. Little nut right there. This is going to allow me to actually get inside. Here's why I like a doser. <laughs> You could do, dose it out. Nice. Dose, dose out my screw. Get your hand down in there. You see how when I turn this without touching anything, it's going to spin that a little bit? Yeah. Just get your hand right there, and then we can actually even push it down. 
see how I'm actually able to push that. It's on a spring. Oh, okay. And then I can just loosen it, which I'm sure you can see a whole bunch right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Right. How's that? That's perfect. <laughs> um, so then we can loosen it, take this out of here. It's really an easy process to get, mm -hmm. get all the stuff out. It goes a lot quicker when someone's not staring at you with the camera. You a little nervous? No, never. So now we can actually pop this out of here. Nice. Okay. That'll allow this to spin freely. That'll allow us to see all that. And we could get a vacuum stuff. in there. And... Yep. and here's why I like taking this off. A lot of people would say to spray it out and all yeah. that. There's all these little chambers inside here. And watch this. See all that stuff there? Yeah. See how none of it's moving? Mm -hmm. None of it's going to go anywhere. Um, it has to always have a little bit of gap. So it's nice to be able to clean that out. This is something you can do a lot more frequently because there's really no risk at stripping that guy. This out. Okay. Okay. Then we can get inside of there. Um, most places, this I've cleaned pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. That is probably months old coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you don't want to get that inside of people's stuff. Let me get down in there. Can also get down to the spring. Um, this is going to be the tension generally that's kind of pulling through mm -hmm. here. Um, if you want to grease it, it's nice, but it's just make Feels sure good. it's nice and springy. Okay. Um, it's a pretty easy thing to replace. From there, we've got this here. Same thing. We can just turn that on. One important note that you guys almost just saw when mm -hmm. you're using a shop vac, if you're putting your screws right there, <laughs> Be don't careful. swing up from the right. Just saying. Be careful. That would have been an awesome yeah. blooper, though. <laughs> from there, we can actually Let's go ahead and put this back on. two hours fishing your screws out of the uh, shop back. One of the important things, make sure, see that little notch right there? We've got to make sure we get that down in here. Where? Okay. Okay. Notch is right here. And let me use a screwdriver so you can see. There's a little... Oh, so you right need there. to engage it there. Yeah. And what that does, again, this protects. It's a spray guard. So it protects. If I were to just not have this in here and have something shooting out, mm -hmm. I don't have to go dose crazy. to get yeah. anything. You would literally just have grinds coming coming straight down. Coming out. So a lot of people put this back in and they, they forget to, to, to center it, to get, okay. actually get it in there. So you want to make sure as we drop that in, we want to get it into that channel. Nice. Okay. Now, of course, I'm very springy, and this mm -hmm. is really the hardest part to it. But it's not that hard. Two fingers will like, we'll settle that basically. And then we just gotta get inside. Little tip here that I don't have with me, if you have any grease, okay. any food grade grease, you can actually put a little bit on there. It'll make it a lot easier to spin this down. Okay. There's a lot of espresso grinds that make it on here. Mm -hmm. And so you can't do your fancy little trick like hit it once and it spins 600 times. Mm -hmm. A little bit of grease makes it a lot easier to do. Okay. So that'll do this the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so after I've got that, then I'm putting my finger guard slash, and I'm putting my burrs back on. Yep. Anything else that I need to think about um, when I'm doing this maintenance? At this point, no. I mean, you know, really, they're, they're simple systems. Okay. Um, How often do I want to do this? Again, I, I run into that, that general rule of there's no such thing as overcleaning. Okay. With that being said, um, I would go into this once a month. You know, uh, the chamber? Yeah, okay. once a month, maybe even once every couple weeks if you could, because mm -hmm. it'll just keep it nice. It'll keep your fronts from staining. Okay. Um, this cleaning here, I would clean this like every day, every yeah. other day, um, because that builds up very quickly. Going inside of here and actually taking these burrs off, I mean, every six months is probably enough, especially if you're cleaning with grinds um, or some type of cleaner going in. Okay. Um, and how often would I want to run grinds through? Like weekly, daily? I, that becomes a cost issue. Okay. Same deal. If you, if you, there, you've never heard anybody that basically, let's say, ran grinds through after every single two pound, two yeah. pound hopper that had a problem. Okay. Um, I would say once a week is is nice. Um, if you're a very high volume shop, it's it's great to go even more than that. Like do it every night when you're closing every out or night, something. Every night, every even every couple nights maybe. Okay. Um, you'll see these real real greasy espresso. You kind of saw here, and we clean it very you know very much, but you can even still see how some of it's still stuck yeah. right there. If it's really oily, it's just going to start sticking. Okay. And once that starts filling, now it's not cutting anything anymore. Mm -hmm. okay? It's now it's like level with oil. Yeah, now, now it's level <laughs> with oil. So now we're not we're not slicing beans anymore. We're just kind of rubbing them till they turn into a powder. <laughs> <laughs> so, a massage. It's a it's a, a, a coffee massage. Very gentle coffee <laughs> massage. So okay. yeah, that's that's kind of the general idea. Is if if you can get in there and do it. I mean, like I said, once once every couple of days would be okay. awesome with grinds. So now we just uh, like lay that guy back down yep. in there. And now we're gonna lay it back down. Line up the three screws from there. 
put it back on the exact same way it just came off. Use the right screw. Right, the proper screw actually does mm -hmm. help. I know it's crazy, isn't it? Um, but once you kind of get back through there, you won't have to worry about binding it until we go get ready to tighten it. Okay. Okay. As and you'll see with like this one here, I don't want to quite get it tight, but as we do that, that's when you have to actually stick something through. If you've got this guard off, you can also stick something like that. through that way. It makes okay. it a little bit easier as well. There's not as much need on this one right here to actually take it off. On the topper? On the topper. Okay. Um, you can, but part of the good part is it's already off. I'm holding it in my hand so I can really kind of get into it. But do you don't have to worry about anything underneath the burr? No, um, if you start getting into this one, this is really where you have a high risk of stripping things. Okay. Because you're holding it. There's yeah. nothing to brace it. So your hand's shaky. Um, you've kind of- Cause you've had too much coffee. Yeah, like us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend too much inside of there. You already have it out. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason I like to get this one out here is just because it's, I can get it in my hand mm -hmm. um, versus being down in there like that. More thorough. Yeah. All right, so now we can start spinning. You can see where that goes from there. Once I get it to that point, it's not overly tightened. We're not, you know, not Hercules. Is that still reference, Hercules? Yeah, okay. why not? I don't know, that show hasn't been on in ages. Yeah, but it, like, he, he, it's a, it's like a, an age old myth <laughs> so, <laughs> from thousands of years ago. It's just nice and tight, okay? You can okay. see how I just bound it right there, basically. Yeah. Give it a little good one there. Um, do not, do not, do not use something like Loctite. Okay. As a tech, we hate it when we get there and there's Loctite because I basically have to break your grinder. Eek. Um, but yeah, nice and tight, nice and snug. So that way if I do it this like this, I can't loosen anything. Mm -hmm. That's as tight as we have to go. You don't have to get crazy with it. You can see just from a little bit there, you get a little bit of stripping that happens. Yeah. But we're good to go. Everything's okay. nice there. Then we put our top bar back on. Yep, we're gonna put our top bar back on. One of the hard parts with uh, this one here, first off, see the little three? Yeah. Gotta get it inside those little springs. Okay. One of the hard part with this one though is that this one won't just randomly start. A lot of the other grinders will start for you. Okay. This one won't. You have to kind of use two hands here. So we do have to give some pressure just to get this actually started. To get it engaged down, yep. pressure down on those springs. Yeah. Okay. A lot of other grinders don't, even on bigger grinders on Mazars, you don't have to do that, but okay. the Super Jolly requires you to push down. And, and then, then once then we're there. How do I know when to put my set screw down? It's a wonderful question. Um, do you, I basically take it all the way down and then yeah. bring it back a bit? What's gonna happen is uh, Are we that's all probably another video of how to set your grinder. Right now, I'm almost touching. Okay. What we're gonna do effectively is I'm gonna turn the grinder on and I'm gonna mm -hmm. go down until you hear that squealing, the wee okay. actually touching. And that's when I know my burrs are touching. And then I'm gonna back it off about halfway. Two but you can't numbers. just do that now. I mean, like no. because you can feel like that they can't. You can't do it any further. Uh, yeah, I, but I, I don't really know. I mean, honestly, you. No, I don't. And when, when I go down like this, that's probably okay. bound right there. So theoretically, I could if you do a half off, a back half it off from there, and okay. I'm probably pretty good. Okay. But at the same point, it's so much easier. Once you're at this here and I'm free, mm -hmm. I'm plugged in, I can actually just turn it on, and then I can just hear it. It's okay. a lot easier to do that. Then we're going to course it up just you a know, bit. You know, Gail just does it by touch. Does she? Oh, yeah. Gail's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> She's been doing it longer. Cool. All right. So then you're all clean as a whistle. Put your yep. little finger card back on and you're all ready to go. Yep. Other than that, I just got to do this. I've got one more nut to go back inside of there. Just like so. Cool. All right. Well, all I, will let, I will let you do that off camera. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Brandon.